بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Let me show you my Muslim space t-shirt <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رمضان مبارك to each one of you اللهم صلي وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا ونورنا وشفيعنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام Join me in reciting الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين آمين يا الله I invoke the Prophet blessing to this session أهلا ومرحبا وسهلا uh, in Arabic this is our welcoming words and these three words are often translated as welcome. But uh, I am inclined to use them because they set the kind of the ambient to our session. Ahlan, ahlan means that I, I take you as a family. I take each one of you as a family. And we are indeed in, in the Muslim Ummah, one family, and in our tight-knit uh, uh, community in Muslim space, one family as well. So I do take you all, I take each one of you as a family. Ahlan, ahlan. Wasahlan, and sahlan means that I take you with ease. I take you as you are, however you come. Marhaba, I take you with spaciousness. I take you with space to be however you are, to progress, to improve. So, ahlan wa marhaban wa sahlan. Did not really prepare for today's session. I'm mostly here to breathe with you. Breathe with you because uh, even if our uh, topic for this session is to improve our salah, our namaz, our prayer, I truly think the the key to it is to breathe fully, not in a shadow way. Let us start with sitting properly first. <sighs> Ground yourself, not on your prayer mat because we are not ready to pray yet. We're just preparing ourselves. <laughs> Sit in a way that is comfortable, not relaxing. I need you, your awareness. I need you to feel your body. Uh, just comfortable and. In a, in a way that you feel you are grounded, your butt on the ground or on the chair you like. And you feel your body. Most, most importantly, you feel your spine. Your spine is your, your sign to your, or your, your, uh, tool to your healthy pride. So feel your spine.
Try to breathe. Fill your lungs with breathing. Hold it. Breathe out. The first breath was given to Adam was by Allah. We might not do our namaz 24-7, but we breathe 24-7. This is our tiny version of salah. Let us have the intention to uh, get rid of our shadow breathing and use, use our lungs properly. Breathe in Allah. Hold it. Breathe out Allah. Breathe in Allah. Breathe out Allah. Breathing deeply can bring your emotion to the surface, so you might want to cry or you might bring anger or you're lucky that your uh, cameras are off, so if you feel like crying, cry. <laughs> Breathe in Allah. This breath that uh, take, takes uh, oxygen to every cell of your body, to every organ. These organs and these cells that enables you to, to use your body and to pray and to walk and to eat and to smile and to do muraqaba sessions, muraqaba sessions. Breathe out, Allah, alhamdulillah for breathing. Allah Akbar. Allah. We do everything in a fast pace, so this session is to just sit around and talk about Salah and breathe and do nothing because we deserve to take this time to ourselves. Um, keep breathing deeply, letting go down in your tummy. The way I like to talk about Salah Namaz, it's not to bring all the the hadith and the scripture from Quran and hadith and uh, what the sages and scholars say about it. Now, I I rather to use the uh, the reverse engineering method to just focus on what what is my goal with the salah. Oh, Bilal, comfort us with the salah. I want it to be my comfort zone. I want it to connect with Allah. So just let us focus on, on our ultimate goal with the salah. To have it as a refuge, as your worldly wants go to as your powerful tool. As your tool that sets the daily routine for you. As a measure to uh, measure your self-worth, connection to Allah, and why you are here in this life.
I often think uh, about the Quran, and I, I invite you to think with me. The Quran, that is uh, the book of Allah, that has all the instructions we need, uh, commands that shows us how to be a Muslim. Quran that has the stories of the prophets before Muhammad and, and the stories of what's going to come in the future and it's the Quran just descended to the Prophet. Right. But when it came to the salah, to the prayer, to the mass. The Prophet ﷺ had to travel all the way to Jerusalem. Had to make some effort. Not only that, he had to ascend a heaven after another. Keep breathing. And imagine the prophet just sending that magical trip. The Holy Quran was delivered to the Prophet through Jibreel. But prayer, no, directly from Allah. Because it's your relationship with Allah. It's your direct relationship to Allah. And he went down and then prayed with all of the prophets. Prayer is this, it's, it's your story in this life. Salah is your story in this life. It's the, what empowers you on earth this this word that's what uh, contribute to your advancement to the humanity to be Khalifa a successor mm -hmm. read in Allah Breathe out, Allah. Well, salah is the skill that assists you in this life. Once you know how to pray properly. And it's the, the measure by which you, you uh, measure your improvement and your growth. Salah is also your destination, your ultimate goal here in this worldly life. The Salah is just a wholesome system. And because it's, it's a wholesome system, you need to take it and learn it with patience, step by step. Lots of people are um, identify as Muslim. They they witness that there is no God but Allah, and they witness that the Messenger is the uh, Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Right? And other people are identify as practicing Muslim. I personally think it's what differentiates you from a Muslim and practicing Muslim is, is the salah. The hadith of the Prophet says the first thing 
will be the, the servant of Allah or the Muslim will, will, will be held accountable for on the day of judgment is prayer. I know we all do other good deeds. But the hadith says, if it's good, if it's your prayer good, then the rest of your deed is good. But if it's bad, then the rest of your deeds are bad. That's how important the salah is. Take a deep breath of Allah. Hold it. Breathe out Allah. Allah said to the prayer in a certain time, the day. There is a beautiful saying of uh, teacher Anayat Khan. He was saying, uh, doing prayers on time is like rewinding the clock to work properly. And we need to rewind our clock, our life, five times a day. How to pay atten attention to the prayer times. Uh, if using the iPhone apps, that reminds you of the prayer times helpful for you, do it. If uh, setting the alarm to remind you of that prayer time, do it. But personally, I don't like to have external brain cell. We need to, uh, your body need to remind you of it. And it takes time to do that. But it's all right. We have all the time and we have five prayers that a day. <laughs> one thing one thing I like to do uh, is when I wake up in the morning, whenever it's time to hold my phone, I hold my phone and I see the, pr the prayer time of the day. Just... Look at them. Dohar is going to be 12.30. What do I have to do at 12.30? Oh, is it my lunch break? Do I have an appointment? How can I pray Dohar at 12.30? I just made the intention to do that. I put it in my heart. And ask Allah to help me to do that. Maghrib time, Asr time, Aisha time. And granted, at first you will miss few of the prayers. But with time, when you tune in to the prayer time every day in the morning and set your intention to do that, your body will rem remind you, not an extern external brain cell like a phone or alarm. Allah. We do five prayers a day, right? But to pray, or one of the things that I like to do is to focus on one pray, on one prayer. One prayer that there's no way 
you will miss it, its time. Um, I thought I was going to pick uh, Aisha prayer because I like nighttime prayer. I thought I'm going to use pleasure time, but what what really worked with me was Duhur because I don't have commitments during Duhur, nor that I need to sleep early or sleep late, like Fajr or Isha, right? You pick whatever prayer works for you. And of course, of course, have your intention to pray all the five uh, prayers on, on time. But one prayer, there is no way that you will miss its time. Focus on that prayer. For example, for me, Duhur worked well at first. Then on prayer. Just like when you, whenever you wanna fix something in your life, you you focus on one part, and then the rest of the parts just fall in its places. In its places, right? It works with salah as well. Believe me, or at least it worked with me. <laughs> I'll give you time to breathe and think of, of one prayer that you will focus on. Even if you think of yourself as a practical person, a person who's up to their task, every time you 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 choose to do something above your prayer or prioritize something that is not your prayer, you actually prioritize something that is not you. Because your true self is the self that is connected to Allah. You are actually giving the something else important over yourself, over your true self. You're, you're giving the power to something else to neglect or cut your uh, connection time with them. Even if the task you're about to do is so important for you, once you once you prioritize your salah, <laughs> nothing else it will be important. Every time you pick something over Salah, uh, you kind of emphasize on your wrong in understanding for success. Like, oh, my meeting is more important. You kind of neglect your power of like that you are a person and that you can choose your priorities. Why there is, there is sweetness when you choose your inner self, when you choose your connection, to Allah over what you think uh, is success according to the to the worldly measures, right? <laughs> this is your biggest commitment, your deepest one. It's your commitment that you don't do for paycheck in the end of the the of the month. It's your commitment that you no one will review you for it. 
<laughs> five stars. It's something that you do it for yourself. You don't you don't do it for the social status. No one will see you praying in your car or in your room or in your mosque. You truly pray for yourself and your connection to Allah. You are your door to Allah. No one owes you anything. You owe this to yourself. So yes, I encourage you to start with one prayer. And you have enough time to improve all of the other five prayers, inshallah. Breathe in Allah. Allah who gave you the first breath. Hold it in your tummy. Breathe out Allah. Your spine up straight. Don't get too relaxed. Just comfortable. Let us go and do some wudu for the salah. Let us approach wudu with the same stepping, like same, same feeling after we're uh, going to the shower after spending some time in the gym. Right. You did all what you need to do in work, life, and kitchen. And you're sweating a little bit. You're not dirty, you're just refreshing yourself. Allah created you. You're not dirty. You're just refreshing yourself and you're approaching your with with your wudu with the with the same intention to to bathing for a celebration. You're going to meet Allah shortly. I I do often recommend to do wudu with the cold water. Cold water that will give you that, you know, gasp to kind of uh, awake you from uh, or or hmm, awake your nerve system. Just like the cow, a cold shower we do, right? Give you a moment to remember yourself, to awaken the nerves in your body. Give you a slight uh, discomfort, right? So, so you can breathe. When we feel something cold, we're like, Shh. I want you to feel that when you do do it. Because you're preparing yourself for something new, right? Now set the water to drop a little bit. Conserve the water during the do. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. And so you can take the time to do your do slowly and feed it. And then until like the intention intentions during doing wudu become habits. And then you can fast in wudu, right? Fast. <laughs> but at least do a hundred wudu in a slow motion. <laughs> Have you ever did a uh, like a shower for a baby? Like to just clean them from the mud or the 
chocolate. I want you to do the wudu the same way, to start feeling your body with love and mercy. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Acknowledge your body, your, your, your limbs, your parts, your... We don't do that often. Wudu is actually the first step to uh, renew your relationship to your body. Your body that carries you. Your body that submits to your command and obeys you, follow your orders. Wash it with love and see. Prepare it to meet the law. Don't waste water. Have that intention too. Prophet said, don't waste water even if you were at a flowing river. Flowing river that is yours, right? Still, don't waste water. Wudu is to cleanse this vessel, the, to, like I, I often think about the dua after wudu, right? When you finish wudu, you say, I bear witness to ashadu anna la ilaha illallah anna muhammad Allah maja'alna min tawabin wa min tutahirin. Oh Allah, make us among those who repent and pur purify themselves. Rasul says, whoever say this dua after wudu, the eight gates of paradise open for them. And I was like, what? We did not pray yet. And the, the eight gates of paradise are open. Because you just witnessed that la ilaha illallah. And you cleansed yourself. You had a practical intention. Pray. That is enough for Allah to open the doors of heaven. As I said, go through your body parts one by one. Clean them with the gentleness, with cold water, with gratitude that you have them. And they they work for you, and that you will use them to connect to Allah shortly. How do we clean up for going to a party? Similarly. Purify yourself with water. Prophet Alayhi Salaam. Oh, Allah, I am book of Prophet my friend. He used to uh, supplicate uh, the dua of Nur after, uh, after Wudu. I love this dua. It connects me to my body. And we live in our body. We're not an angel. We need to start feeling our bodies more. So why not take this five prayers to connect to ourselves and Allah together, right? Rasul salam used to say, after finishing the wudu, <clears throat> Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura. This piece of flesh, O oh Allah, make in my heart light. This piece of flesh, if it's sound, if our life is sound, and if it's corrupt, your whole life is corrupt, right? So just imagine connecting to your heart in every wudu. 
يا الله اجعل في قلبي نورا practice with me this oh Allah making my heart light وفي سمعي نورا and in my hearing light this is the first sense Allah created for me to hear before saying and in my hearing, light, light, what's light? To filter what I hear, to set my limit. What I'm allowing to enter my ears and therefore my brain. Oh Allah, making my hearing light. And in my seeing light, Wafi Bosari Nura. And in my seeing light, see how Allah, how the Prophet is teaching us to connect to our five, six senses. Wafi Bosari Nura. Those are my windows to see Allah creation. Wafi Bosari Nura. وفي لساني نور and in my tongue light ومن وعن يميني نور and on my right light وعن يساري نور and on my left light ومن أمامي نورا and in front of me light ومن خلفي نورا and behind me light <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because it's so it's, it just reminds me of the uh, Animation cartoons where like you have a superpower and this bubble around you that protects you and can make you a superhuman. <laughs> and above me, right? Women talking. And below me, right? Women talking. Prophet goes on sometimes and say, and in my nerves. See, don't overlook your body. And in my nerve, nerves, light. And in my flesh, and in my vein. Light. He also goes and says, Wafi Shari Nura, and in my hair, light. Make me light. Jalni Nura. Shalni Nura. Jalni Nura. Make me. Make. وَكُنْ لِي نُورًا عَلَمًا and pour upon me light upon light. اللهم صلى الله عليه وسلم الله Alhamdulillah 
I think about the Prophet Muhammad Sallam finishing his wudu, reciting his dua, even walking, walking to the mosque. <laughs> walking to the mosque to go and pray. Prayer that he said, oh Bilal, comfort me with prayer. The prayer that he said about the apple of my eyes and just praying. So what did the prophet feel just walking going there? I try to feel that. And I know I don't I don't often walk and go to the mosque at the time I pray. I pray in my in my house. Does he walk like just feeling overwhelming happiness? Maybe skipping. <laughs> I think it's important to walk to our prayer spot, even if you pray in your house. I truly think that in, in, in the way I do it, uh, I do my wudu upstairs and pray downstairs, or I, I do my I go to the bathroom in the end of the house and pray in the room in the other end of the house. I just try to to walk to my prayer spot. Sometimes if I must like oh, the, the 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 bathroom inside in the like inside the room I'm going to pray in, I go and stand by the window a little bit. Just allow yourself to feel that time between wudu and pray, I'm going to meet Allah. We don't often have that time, but try your best to do it. To drive going to the mosque. When I go to my massage for an appointment, oh my God, I'm the happiest. Just putting the, my favorite song, dancing. And it's massage for me. How about my prayer that comforts me or I'm working on it to comfort me? Allah. Going to the prayer, I think, what do I need of the prayer the most today? Sometimes I do focus on me just standing. I need more pride in my life. I need to be strong. Sometimes I, I just long to do sujood, to cry. I have a list of du'as and things to ask Allah. Walk into the prayer, think about this. Or just do the care. Now, Before standing on the prayer mat, in muraqaba and meditation, we always talk about grounding yourself, grounding yourself. And I, now I'm touching my feet. <laughs> Touch yours as well. And I always wondered how to stand properly. And every time I think of it, 
the image that comes to my mind uh, is uh, our master Sayyidina Ibrahim If you ever go to Umrah, just in the front of Mecca, of the Kaaba, you see his uh, the print of his feet when he uh, was building a Kaaba. If if I, I I ask Allah to grant you all Umrah, inshallah. But if not, Google it and see it. He was so grounded. He knew what he wanted from Allah. He wanted that connection. He stood firmly. He has, he had one goal to the point where his feet went into the, the, the block of mud, right? I stand on my prayer mat and I uh, invite you to do so when you stand on your prayer mat. And just put your feet same way Ibrahim did. How, how strong they were, how firm. Like, Allah, hey, I came, I came to you, I'm, I'm showing up. Maybe not fully, but I, at least my feet are. So this is the first step, I'm taking steps to you. So we're standing to prayer on our prayer mat, just like Ibrahim did, or trying to be like how Satan Ibrahim did. Grounded for showing up at least. We're trying, whether we, we are praying on time or not. Trying, but we are there. Allah. We're standing about to commence our prayer with Allah. To wish to have a perfect prayer, don't wish that. Wishes are shallow. And in Islam, we place a great uh, value for intentions. Prophet والسلام, said, actions are but by intentions. And each man will have what he intended. So intention is important. Intentions are different from just wishing. Intentions are real, real seeds. Now, if you follow up and like and put water on them and plant them properly, they will grow. But they are seeds for sure. Right. And so now we are in front of Allah about to start our prayer. And, and intention, setting intention is one of uh, our can, the corners of the prayer. Like we, it's a must to set your intention and to say, oh Allah, I'm about to pray a duhr prayer. But more, more than that, what you can add to that intention, right? Is to give up about your, uh, Willpower, <laughs> and just to ask Allah to guide you in this prayer and to humble you. And to humble yourself. And that there, there's, there's no set of skills that will prepare you enough to, to meet Allah unless, unless he bless you with that. 
And so what I like to say is la hawla wa la quwwata illa with my intention. Okay, I'm going to pray the whole prayer of Maghrib. It's also la hawla wa la quwwata illa I come to you helpless. I come you I come I come to you asking your blessing. I come to you asking you to guide me through my path. Standing. In your prayer mat, grounding like Ibrahim is, praying your, preparing your intention. You already cleaned up with the uh, wudu, fresh light around you. We come to Allah like that. Allahu Akbar, Takbiratul Ihram, the starting takbir. It scares me. It's what scares me the most. <laughs> and if you don't benefit of anything of this muraqaba sessions during Ramadan, but to learn anything about the first takbir, that will suffice. <laughs> Allahu Akbar is so important. And we call it Takbirat al-Ihram for so many reasons. First of all, it's, it's different from the Takbir we do inside prayer. Allahu Akbar for Rukur, Allahu Akbar for prostrating. No, it's different. Your prayer does not count without the first Allahu Akbar. Right? If you forget Takbir of a Rukur, you can make up that. But if you forget the first Takbir, you did not pray at all. And we it's called Takbir at Ihram. Ihram, like Haram, like Muhar. Like it's commencing you to something great. Ihram, we use it with Mecca, right? And Medina, with the places, Haram. Once we go inside the Haram, we don't argue, we don't fight. We feel this sacred, the sacred place that we 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 don't kill animals, we don't have, have intercourse. We just focused about Allah, right? And similarly with Takbirat al-Ihram, Allah. Fixing your prayers, it's all about knowing how to say Allah. Once you master your Allah Akbar, everything else in your prayer will be easy. Wallah. <laughs> I think about uh, Allahu Akbar as like the key to the prayer, the key to your connection to Allah. If, if your key does not match the door hole, if you have a rubber key that is not strong enough, <laughs> I mean, your prayer can count, but did you really benefit from it to where like it transform you? Allah Akbar. Anything for anything to be perfect, it has to have uh, to have good start. Allahu Akbar is your good start, is your strong start. Uh, you, you built a house 
with doing a perfect wudu. You built a house with uh, having a good intention. You you built a house by coming to prayer on time. You furniture the house inside by knowing how to do sujood and you 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 bought your uh, I don't know ACs and fridge and by knowing how to practice everything inside the salah, right? You 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 bring a perfect company by bringing the Rasul Prophet in the your tashahud. Uh, but without the key of Allah Akbar of starting a good a good salah. Allahu Akbar is to admit that there is nothing greater than Allah. And we all know, we all know Allahu Akbar than everything. Allahu Akbar than Israel. Allahu Akbar than... But is it Akbar in your heart? Is it bigger than the matters that distract you from the prayer? That's what we need to work on truly. Allahu Akbar, right? Is it Akbar to where uh, the meeting does not distract, like you are going to do meeting later, distract you from your prayer right now? Is it Akbar to where you uh, prioritize your relationship to Allah over everything else and you on your calendar or over your thoughts. And Allahu Akbar, Akbira to Ihram, the first Akbira does not come easy. You will take your time with it. But once you take your time with it, once you perfect Allahu Akbar, the first Akbira, as I said, everything will be easier, inshallah. I like when I do takbir al ihram, my hand has henna, is to, before doing the takbir, Allah, Allah, Akbar, surrounding, sur surrendering to Allah, to put all, uh, and I invite you to do this with me right now, just try with me now to put everything that concerns you on the top of your hand. So we can't throw it, right? And breathe and say Allahu Akbar. With each Allahu Akbar you say, pick something that distracts you from, from, from salah or during the salah or come before you on Allah. Put it here. It's important in the worldly matter, right? But we, we want to get rid of it right now before starting And so pick at least five things to put on your hand. And I truly, it, it will work every time you say, Allahu Akbar, throw something behind you, something important, right? Uh, that occupies your mind and occupies your heart. Throw it behind you and say, Allahu Akbar to my concern about my relationship with my partner. Allahu Akbar, and throw it away and surrender to Allah. We are surrendering, right? Allahu Akbar to uh, the my work, my work tasks that I have to finish today. Allahu Akbar to everything on my calendar. <laughs> You know what you need to say Allah Akbar to, right? And so let us do five Allah Akbar. And, and, and speak to yourself. What are the things that stand between you and Allah? And say Allah Akbar to them. Allah. Allah Akbar.
الله أكبر الله الله I'm exceeding the time. Sorry about that. Hmm. I think this is enough for today. And we'll tap more into uh, but what, what can we do about our prayers to improve it and to have such uh, God-pleasing tips to it, inshallah. One thing I would like to say before uh, closing this session is be gentle with yourself. Your, your, your uh, work or your pr prayers does not have to match your intention in the beginning because you're still yet working on yourself and your, your prayer. So, so invoke Allah mercy in you and be gentle with yourself and take it step by step. Jazakum Allah khair. Salatu salam.